like to inform you about video game design and why it takes so long. So, I'm sure you've all been waiting for an app to update or waiting for a game to release or something like that. Well, there's a lot of work and effort that gets put into those. I've made a couple of games. Here's one of them I made with a team for a competition last year. It was called Disc Golf. It was just like a virtual version of Disc Golf. And then I've also made a couple of apps and put them on the App Store for Android. And made quite a few updates for a couple of them too. So the first part to having a video game is you have to code and build the video game. So here is a diagram I made of how video games come together. So first you have to have models because if you don't have models you don't have anything to display and then you just have like a blank screen. So you need models which you make then they are 3D objects then you put images on the models so that they have color and aren't just the default. And then if you have a bunch of models, then you just have one stagnant picture that doesn't change. Then after that, you'd need to apply code to it so that it has something to do. Like, it would know that this model has to obey gravity. Or this model needs to explode whenever it's touched. And then, you'd also need some music or sound effects into it. Because without that, you have a pretty boring game. And then, after you compile all those together into your game engine, you finally come out with an EXE, or like, you can actually play the game. And then, after you have that, you can finally test it and find out what you need to improve on. So, here is a screenshot of the game engine I usually use, which is called Unity. And it just shows you how everything works together. So here is all the stuff about your player. You'd have your script that controls its movement. Here's the circle collider, which is the shape of it. And here's some other scripts down here. So, coding takes a while. I've written a bunch of scripts, um, some of them hundreds of lines long, and uh, usually takes a couple of hours to write of one that is like 200 lines long. But I've went up to 30 hours in some of them. So, this is a quote I found from John Maida. He said, It, the computer, doesn't know when it's wrong, and it could keep on doing the wrong thing over and over without tiring, because the computer does not know where your errors in the code are. You'd have to go in and find out what is doing wrong what you put the wrong number in, or what you forgot to put a semicolon in. The computer does not know that for you. Balance. If once you have a compiled game, then it could, if it's not in balance, then it's just going to be really boring. So, all of your game mechanics have to be in balance. Here is a diagram of how you would do that. This is a diagram I found in a book I was reading about the balancing your game mechanics. Uh, here's where it came from down there. But uh, here is a chart about how skilled you're supposed to be in the game as you progress. See here on the bottom is time. Here's your skill level. Like You don't want it to be a straight up line or else it'll be too easy. And you don't want it to be to too low to the ground or else it'll be boring. So then if you have different character types you need to make sure that using all of your abilities they all have to total out to have the same amount of power in total. And here would be a bigger example. You usually have multipliers on some of your skills. And your totals have a lot bigger numbers. And then it ends up looking like a graph about like this. And all of these are in balance. Now bad 
things happen in unbalanced games. It's like you'd have way more money than you need to be. Like if you have a current senior game and it's unbalanced, then it could just get really, really boring after a while because you're making millions of dollars and you only were in the game for a couple of days. It's like boredom, repetitive gameplay, most famously emphasized by clicker games, which I'm sure you saw, like you just click the cookie over and over and it keeps on giving you points. Well, that's really repetitive and after a while it just gets really boring. So, the third phase to making a video game is testing. Once you've made it and it's out, you aren't just going to use the first version. Here is the first version of Minecraft. And Minecraft is widely considered one of the most popular and most successful games in the world. But if it still looked like this, it would not be. And you can see, you can't see very far. A lot of the graphics are really choppy. And it has all this annoying text at the bottom that wasn't toggleable back then. Now look at it. It looks really surreal, almost real, but not because it's all in the locks. Then here is uh, the desert, which you can see you can see really, really far away in the new, the newer updates. And that was all because they tested and found out which features they wanted to change and get rid of. And they have people that do that, the video game testers, and um, basically video game testing is a long, is a hard work. They sometimes work eight to 12 hours a day just doing the same thing over and over. So fixing bugs is even harder than finding them because Whenever you have, like, say, your jump rope, uh, you can't jump. Well, there are numerous things that could be connected to that rope jumping, such as the running speed, your slope of what you're going up, character models might be kind of wonky, your colliders might not be the right side, your coding might have, like, a missing semicolon, your key maps, maybe if you're holding down too many keys, who knows, a lot of the times, the things that are more obvious, it's not even one of those. So, in conclusion, there are three parts to video game development, and you have to have all three of them to make a 